Thanks for making the time. Uh, hopefully you find this informative. And this is Learn How Sirius XM Marine Can Help You Be a More Successful Angler. We're going to take, say, 45 minutes to an hour and review the various Sirius XM features and get some feedback, too, um, about how it can enhance your fishing experience. And we're also thankful and fortunate to have the uh, host and founder of the Florida Insider Fishing Report, Rick Murphy, with us tonight. Rick has logged uh, an unbelievable amount of hours and time fishing and has a ton of stories to share, uh, in particular about uh, Sirius XM weather um, so this evening and how he uses it and how he takes a, advantage of it for his, you know, to optimize his fishing experience. Uh, Rick's also won a tremendous amount of fishing tournaments through his years. So we're, we're thankful to uh, have Rick join us and uh, we'll be asking him questions about some of these slides as we go through them. All right, so without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So some value points. Uh, some of you may have uh, come to our earlier webinars and we have lots of recordings of just regular weather, uh, our regular weather webinars, which we have recordings of for anybody who is interested in them. We can share those with you. But some value points that make SiriusXM weather a little different uh, is that this is the graphical weather information that's overlaid directly on your chart plotter. Um, so you're not looking at a cell phone, you're not looking at a tablet, you're looking actually at your chart plotter on your, uh, your multifunction display uh, uh, of the weather. We have complete coverage, so this is satellite-based, it's not based on cellular network, and I know a lot of people on this call are going offshore, and as most of you already know, when you get somewhere in the four to six mile an hour range offshore, maybe even a little closer, you start losing cell signal. So this is satellite-based, not cellular-based. And then last but not least, and we've been trying to point this out as much as possible, we have a seasonal suspend program. You can actually suspend your service for up to six months. If you're not using your boat, let's say your boat is up on the hard, or maybe you're in the northern latitudes and it's cold in the winter and you're not using your boat, there's no sense in paying for the service. So we encourage you to seasonally suspend at no cost. Uh, and then you simply call in, you see hmm. suspend, suspend and uh, your service gets reactivated, or you get a signal sent to wake up your service at the end of your seasonal suspend. And you can do that up to six months. Uh, and there, you don't get a reactivation fee at the end either. If you simply cancel your service and turn it back on, you get a reactivation fee. Um, so encourage everybody to use seasonal suspend. All right, so this is, uh, we're gonna review just quickly our most common feature, which all of you guys know and probably are very familiar with. Um, so, in, and we're looking at this over a Garmin chart plotter. Um, the first feature is uh, the icon precipitation. So when you click on the precipitation icon, it pulls up your weather radar screen. Probably looks very familiar to people, people as you're seeing here a storm front coming across Florida. Uh, obviously, the red areas are much denser, thicker storms, and green uh, is, is, yes, is less thick. Uh, or dense. And here you can see the boat icon. Dan, if you could take the cursor and point out where the boat is. So we encourage people to look at weather on a regular basis while you're out boating. I did this just yesterday as a storm front was coming through my area uh, and literally uh, worked my way through a storm and was well prepared when I knew the storm was coming to get back to the dock as soon as possible. Uh, some, in some cases, if you're offshore, obviously that's not an option, but hopefully you can work your way through a storm or go through the lesser dense areas of the storm. You'll also see lightning bolts in this image. Uh, not a good thing to see on the water and something to be aware of. So we encourage people to, to do a zoomed out image of the weather on their chart plotter and get a broader perspective of what's going on around you and then zoom in tighter, uh, closer you can see the individual storm cells uh, around you. Dan, what else did I miss here? Um, uh, two things. First of all, the lightning bolts that you see on screen, those are lightning strikes that occurred at that location within the last 10 minutes. So after 10 minutes, the bolt disappears. So, so this is stuff that's happened recently, not stuff that happened sometime within the last, you know, half an hour, hour, or something like that. Uh, secondly, the storm image, not only can you see a static image, uh, of where you are and where the storm is in relation to you, but you can also play a loop to see which way the storm is moving. Um, 
Garmin calls it a loop feature. Some of the other brands of electronics out there call it the animation feature where you can play that loop. And uh, different brands allow you to play different lengths of time. Uh, Garmin plays you a 20 minute loop. Uh, Simrad clocks in the longest. They allow you to play up to a three hour loop of where that storm has been coming from. But realistically, 20 minutes is sufficient. Because what you're trying to see is if, it, if it's headed towards you and if there's a break somewhere that you can get around, and that's really enough of a snapshot to, to give you that information. Dan, tell us about clouds too, if you would, since we're not covering that, and maybe you can just give a voiceover on that service. That sure, feature. there is there is another layer that you can turn on, which is cloud cover. Um, so basically, um, if, if if it's an overcast day, you know the whole screen would go gray, and it, and you can see through it, so you can kind of see what's going on underneath. Uh, but uh, more importantly, when you've got scattered clouds, if you're, if you're looking for a shady spot or, or, or looking for a bright spot, um, then that's helpful as well. Uh, Captain Rick, you might have some, uh, something you'd want to interject here about storms or about clouds. Well, you know, first off, guys, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to join us tonight here. And, you know, one of our big messages out of uh, RM Media this year when we were teaming up with Sirius XM was, you know, we don't have in a technical polling skiff a 17-foot Maverick. You don't have a T-top to get under. You don't have a salon to climb up in. And so when we realized that we could simply install the antenna uh, and have a small puck on the top of our console, in a 17 foot skiff like my Maverick, I gotta tell you, it, it's a game changer because the little boats do 35 miles an hour with a 70 and we're so much more exposed to the elements and knowing exactly which way that storm is moving by using that loop feature that you were talking about, Dan, is everything because if it gets between us, the storm gets between where I am and the boat ramp, it can be problematic, but now since I've got now radar on a little tiny 17-foot boat, one, I can measure the intensity. Number two, I can see whether it has lightning. Number three, I can, if I decide that I need to go to a shelter or get on the other side of it, I can pick the less intensified area and run through and monitor the boat as I'm running through the storm looking at my chart plotter and obviously in my rain gear. So, you know, that's, this is a new thing for light tackle guys to have this in our bay boats or to have this in our technical polling skiffs, which certainly don't have the ability most times to outrun a storm. It's a huge thing. It's a game changer for all of us, you know, polling guys. And I'm very, very excited about it. Okay, thanks, Rick. Um, we'll move on to the next page here, if I can uh, get command of the situation going here. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about forecasting. Um, so you'll notice there there are four buttons on the screen. We've talked about precip. Um, we're getting ready to talk about forecast. And there's another one called sea conditions. And sea conditions and forecasting kind of run hand in hand. So what I'm going to talk about right now is just uh, forecasting, looking at the big picture, looking at barometric pressure and weather fronts. Um, and that's what we're looking at here on this screen. We're seeing the red line showing up is your millibars. Uh, so we've got uh, 30 over here and 29.9 here. Um, and then this dotted line, that, that's what is referred to as a trough. So that's where there's some, some wind action going on. And what we're seeing is what the conditions are right now. And depending on uh, what package you're subscribed to, not only can you see what it's doing right now, but you can also uh, jump ahead to see what it's going to be doing up to 48 hours out. And that goes, depending on, again, we're going back to machines here, some machines advance in three hour increments, some machines advance and show you in 12 hour increments what this pressure is gonna be doing. But you can see on this how much it changed. That trough disappeared, and now there's a, a cold front that showed up, and the, and the pressure has, 
has dipped around. And you notice these lines are now running a different direction as well. And uh, Rick, I know there's a little bit that you wanted to talk to say to, uh, about pressure. Well, certainly barometric pressure is everything and a lot of fish bite. Uh, it affects fish differently. I just experienced, we were filming a Sportsman's Adventure episode in Isla Morada just this past Thursday and Friday. We had high pressure off of the East Coast. And unfortunately, what happened is it shut the bite down because realistically, when the wind is north, it's not a typical weather direction that, uh, or wind direction that the dolphin really like. They like it hot and sticky and humid like a tarpon. Um, but knowing that, allows you to when you see that the pressures are changing and more importantly through the forecast what you can do is adjust your game plan maybe you thought you were going to go fish for dolphin it's all that high pressure is going to get and set up with the area where you want to be and so you might decide to go for a fish that's more probable that likes high pressure whether it's sailfish or kingfish or you know if you're a backcountry guy or a flats guy man Permit fishing is outstanding when you're fishing in high barometric pressure and you have clear clouds and whatnot. So keep that in mind, guys, that through forecast, you can adjust the species that you're going to go fish for instead of uh, maybe trying to make something, you know, as they say, chicken salad, making it chicken stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. So that's a little bit about forecast, and we'll talk about forecasting wind and wave here in a minute. But right now, we've already got people asking us about fishing. Um, so we're going to go talk about fishing and, and, and more. more. What, when, when we look at this screen where it says fishing, what we're going to show you is sea surface temperature. So when you click on the, the button that says fishing, or on other plotters hit the, uh, the sea surface temperature button, here's what you're going to get you're going to get an overview of your area and the water color is going to show you what the temperature is. And I'll talk a little bit about updating that, this information a little further along in the, in the, well, no, I'll tell you what, I'm going to talk about it right now. Um, sea surface temperature. We're getting that information from another source, okay? There's an infrared satellite that makes a pass about every six hours. So we get this information every six hours and we send it to you guys. But for somebody, say the, the satellite makes a pass at 6 in the morning and you turn on your unit at 7, well, we don't want to make you wait until noon to get this information. So we take whatever we have, the most current update that we got, and we resend that data about every 60 minutes. So sometimes when you jump on the boat, you turn it on, you're not, you don't get sea surface temperature right away. It, it depends on where it was in the queue when you turned it on. You could wait as long as 59 minutes, so to speak. But that temperature, uh, we're getting that from an infrared satellite. It does get diminished a little bit on a cloudy day. Another reason to go back to that cloud function, if you're looking at sea surface temp and it just doesn't look right, you might want to flip on those clouds for a minute and say, oh, okay, I see why. Now there's a big cloud hovering over this area, so the temperature might be reading coming in a little lower than we actually think it is. But this is your temperature. And what we're what we're showing you is is basically you can the color of the water represents the temperature. And there on this uh, Garmin we've got the legend turned on so that we can see up here in the corner we're looking at 81 to 88 degrees. And so the the color represents the temperature. Um, and you can see nice and, and and bold right here. There's a there's a temp break and that's what we're looking for. We want to find where that temperature is changing from one to another, where there's a drastic change, because along that edge is where the pelagic activity is going to be. So we're going to get you to the to to where the temperature is changing. All right, Rick, do you want to chime in a little bit about species specifically yeah. and uh, their temperature ranges? Absolutely. You know, so guys. Certainly, we all know that the kingfish like 68 to 76 versus sailfish 72 to 82, and the mahi 72 to 78, and then the tarpon 75 to 90. So here's one of the way I use the Sirius XM Marine. What I'll do in my Garmin is I go in and I adjust the sea surface temperatures that I want to monitor. 
So like my lower limits could be 83 and my upper limits could be, um, you know, even higher or less. But the key is that during certain times of the year, like during January, February, and March, I really want to make sure that I'm monitoring where the warm pockets of water are because that's where the tarpon and the snook are going to gravitate to. You know, they really tarpon like between 72 and 78 in the winter is where I'm going to find them. So I can adjust and manipulate my plotter by, you know, monitor, uh, changing the lower limits. Certainly in the summer, like we are now, what I'll do is I'll go to the upper range. And so I might say, okay, I want to monitor from 80, 78 degrees. I think I have in the contender right now from this dolphin show up to 85. And man, did it change things. And we found actually a blue pocket to the west on Friday. And it was the difference of catching a lot of dolphin on Friday that we didn't catch on Thursday. So, you know, knowing how to manipulate your chart plotter and measuring the water temperatures that you want and using the color graph in the upper left hand corner has become a real tool for me. And so keep that in mind, guys, that you don't just have to set it on a certain setting and leave it that way 365. Use it as a tool and you'll find that you're going to find pockets of water that you want to be fishing in depending on the time of year that you want to fish. So keep that in mind because it's a great tool. I got an example for you here, Rick. Um, so looking at this shot right here, and then we're looking at right down here in the keys, it all looks kind of orange and we'll zoom in close. So this is what we're seeing. We've got about 84 degrees of water, but you go in and adjust that temperature and here's what happens. Now look at this. We're looking off of a Barnes key right here. All right. So we hit the, the, the temperature, adjust the scale. Now look at what we can see. This is the same area, but we can, you, that's what you're talking about right there, Rick. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to play in the 84 degree water down to, let's call it the 82, where it starts to change and be cooler. Because as we all know, in the heat of the summer, the tarpon and the bonefish don't like it. So that's why you have such great fishing early in the morning versus a permit or a redfish. They don't seem to mind that hot water. So again, guys, I'm using this as a tool so that I can adjust my fishing plan for the day. I know that when I'm looking at this, that I've got to go do my early morning fishing for bonefish and tarpon early because of what the scale is telling me versus uh, I can wait and go permit fishing and red fishing after 10 o'clock. It's a huge, I mean, it's a great, great tool for me, and I'm using it, really using it. But I've become a better fisherman because of it. Okay. So one thing I do want to want to mention, uh, some of you that, that have Garmin units or have other units out here might or may not know about this feature. Uh, this this ability to uh, adjust the color palette on sea surface temperatures uh, that became available on Garmin units uh, with their December 2018 software update. So if the boat's been put away for the winter, um, you might want to update your software in order to get this feature. Uh, Simrad, Lowrance, Navico products have done this for 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 a long time. That feature's been available where you can adjust your color temperature ranges. Bruno's can do it too. Um, we're waiting on Ray Marine to add this feature to them. Their uh, capabilities, they haven't done that yet. So now we're going to talk a little bit about sea conditions. So we click on the sea condition button and this is the screen that it gives us. So the here the color of the water no longer represents sea surface temperature. Now what the color of the water is telling us is, is wave height. And we've got a scale here we can look at that tells us, um, and basically this scale stays pretty much the same. It's not adjustable like sea surface temperature. Uh, dark blue is one foot or less, and it goes all the way up to red where you don't want to be there. Um, and typically with all these devices, you can also click anywhere on screen, and it would pop up uh, and, and give you the, uh, the wave height at that location. 
uh, different plotters will give you a, a flip to a page with nothing but text data. So it'll tell you the wave height, the wind speed, the water temperature, all on, on one page. Um, but what we're looking at here is the, uh, the wave height is the color of the water. So you can see there's not much wave going in close to shore. And then as we um, move out, it's about seven, eight footers out there. And then we're looking at, there's a red arrow. And I apologize, you can, you can barely make it out on this screen, but there are red arrows which are giving us wave direction. So the waves right now, according to these arrows, are pretty much running from east to west right here. And then over here, they're shifted around a little bit. They're coming more like uh, east, northeast to southwest direction. Um, and then the other symbol we have here is what we call a wind barb. So the wind barb is giving you both the speed and the direction. And the uh, way it works is there's, I'll, I'll use this example over here. It's a little easier to see. Think of this as a fixed point. This is where you would, are standing. And if you were pointing into the wind, the wind would be coming from that direction. So in this example right here, the wind is out of the, the south southeast and it's at 10 knots this little piece on the end here is telling us the speed of the wind so over here the wind shifted a little bit um, it's coming out of the, the south more of the, more to the southeast and it's running at 15 knots here's wind coming from the west at 10 knots and here's wind coming out of the the north northwest at 15 knots so that's how the the wind barb works. And not only can you see what the current conditions are doing, but also the units have the ability to do forecasting. So we can click on this little icon up here and it would tell us not only what it's doing now, but we could look ahead to see what it's gonna be doing 12 hours from now, 36 hours from now. So you can see how that's gonna be changing so if you're running out at six in the morning, you might want to see at noon what it's going to be like. Right, Rick? Absolutely. You know, the other thing that we're using this for too, Dan, uh, you know, when we come to set up on the reef, a lot of times when you have wind and current going in the same direction, it's magnifying your current. So it's a great place to set up to do yellow tailing or any type of chumming type of fishing that we like to do. However, we all know it's a nightmare that if you have the waves going one way and the wind or the current going the opposite way, it's you're fishing up your anchor line or your chum is simply not going anywhere. So being able to see this is a huge part of, of what we're doing. But more importantly, being able to see the forecast a day or two ahead of time, um, it really makes a giant difference. Um, the other thing that I like using this for sometimes is when we're fishing in uh, different places, locations, and we want to make a big move, what I can do is simply see what that move would look like because of my wind and wave directions. So a good example, a lot of times I fish out of the Middle Keys in Isla Morada, and it's blowing the beat the band. And I can go and take a look and see what's happening over on the West Coast before I run 50 miles, you know, which kind of leads us into, well, we'll get there in a few minutes, but uh, the marine zones that I like to monitor, as you know, Dan. Yeah. And one other thing uh, that I didn't mention earlier is there's a, there's a green line that runs along here, and you'll see there's a number four right there. There's another one over here, number five, number six. Those are your wave periods. So we can see those waves are four seconds apart. Any closer than that with a, with a, uh, a good wind, and we probably don't want to be out there either because it's going to be, uh, be kind of nasty, kind of choppy. <laughs> so we're giving you that wave period information as well. And then as an overlay, there, this is your barometric pressure. This is just we added. We were talking about pressure earlier but I just kept it on this chart as well, because it does, uh, barometric pressure uh, has a lot to do with how the wind, how it affects the wind. If you've got these, these pressure lines, we've got 32 here and 30.3 here. If they were closer together, then the wind would probably be picking up and getting even worse. So you wanna 
the when the when those lines are far apart like that, that's not too bad. But when they start to get closer, that means there's a rapid pressure change occurring, and that that stirs up your wind. And don't don't forget, Dan. If I can add one little thing, you know, when you get high pressure in the winter time, you'll have extremely uh, low tides. Uh, it just they go hand in hand, especially out in the Florida Bay area when. when it, high pressure set up off of you the tide just doesn't come back in and which means it's generally lower than if you would be expecting by looking at a tide chart yep okay moving on jeff you around i am can you hear me <laughs> yeah i can i know you like to talk about marine zones Absolutely. You want to talk uh, buoy and weather stations first? I, I, I will. I'm just making sure you were still there. So before Indeed. we go to marine zones, I know Rick and Jeff are both wanting to talk, talk about that. Um, one other thing, that, that piece of information that we do give you is there are a lot of buoys out there on the water that have sensors on board that are sending data back to NOAA and the National Weather Service. Well, we have the ability to pick up that data and give it to you. So what you can do is, is the symbols will show up on screen and, and sometimes it'll be a buoy symbol like this and, and land-based weather stations sometimes will give it to you like this. Um, different devices will display symbols different ways. Uh, and you can even program it. it. Right now it's telling us partly cloudy. You could have it tell us air temperature instead as a, just as a quick glance symbol. But basically any, any of these sensors that are out there you can click on them and then you're going to get a pop-up window and it's going to give you all of the information from the sensors on board. And the, the nice thing here is, is this is what, I won't call it real-time data, but it's pretty close to, to real-time. The sensors uh, send the data at various intervals and it's going to tell you what time that that sensor pushed that data back to NOAA. So you'll know if it's 20 minutes old or 10 minutes old. That's 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 real really what's happening out there. That's not guesswork, that's not a forecast, that's not somebody's computer model. We're telling you, hey, that buoy that's fifty miles offshore, that's what's happening out there. You can you can believe it. So that's the, the buoy and the uh the weather station information. So now we're gonna move over to marine zones. So coming full circle to what Dan and Rick were talking about a few minutes ago, a very useful tool for anglers in particular. And I'll just point out here before that Rick chime in a little bit about how he uses marine zones. But these uh, little highlighted areas or the outlines of these areas are the various marine zones. And most of us have listened to a VHF forecast on marine zones. Pretty painful uh, experience. It loops, if you recall and uh, often very garbled and kind of hard to understand. So what we've done here is simply divided these zones. These are the NOAA zones. So you click on the zone that you want. And in the, this particular case, you click on Marine Bulletin that uh, Dan has an arrow drawn to right there. Uh, and it pulls up a very detailed report of exactly what's happening in that area. So in this particular case, you can see there's a four-page synopsis of what's going on and what is to come. And this is a super useful, useful tool for anybody who's fishing. And I know a lot of us who are out there fishing are not just fishing right off our dock. Uh, we're, we're going sometimes upwards of 100 miles or more. So uh, the difference between 100 miles uh, in the ocean can be substantial and uh, simply clicking on one of those zones will tell you exactly what's ahead. So, Dan, if you go back to the previous screen, and then uh, uh, if you could give us an example, Rick, if you don't mind. I know you're leaving somewhere out of the Miami area typically, right? Well, so, you know, I've been really fortunate to win uh, 140 titles. And a lot of times in those 140 tournament wins that I've had, it was because I wasn't afraid to run a hundred miles one way and Marine zone certainly opened up a lot of that for me in the, you know, good example today, you know, we, we ran a long ways and had a great day of tarpon fishing when I know that the guys in the tournament were struggling today. Um, but a good example is like I said earlier, I fish out of Isla Morata quite often 
and I'll want to run over to the West Coast because it may be blowing 15 to 20 out of the East. But if I can use the West Coast as a lee and get back over there up against the shoreline on the high tide, man, what a difference in my fishing and comfort level. And I had an old guy tell me a long time ago that if it feels good to us, it feels good to them. And he was referring to them as being the fish. And it really does make a huge difference. And there's been times when I was fishing off of Miami in the Jimmy Johnson sailfish tournament. And once I got a call and it was like, okay, the fish are down south. We clicked on there to see what the conditions were. And sure enough, it was a lot better conditions down there. We also were able to check the wind and waves at the time, and sure enough, what we found happened was that we had current and waves going in the same direction, and there was a tailing situation for us. So, um, you know, it made a big difference. And being able to see what's going on 50, 60 miles, 70 miles in a big boat, like, we, you know, the contender that we run or in the bay boats that we're running, um, and to run 50 or 60 miles at 60 or 65 miles an hour, it's only an hour, guys. But you would never consider doing that if you didn't have the information in front of you when there's a tournament on the line. So that's one of the things that I've learned to use the marine zones for. We don't play around anymore. I can find out exactly what's happening, when it's happening right then. Why don't you tell us about the marine zone forecast, Jeff? We well, touched on that, but, you know, what about the weather data? Yeah, okay. so here's what we're going to – we've actually got quite a few questions. And, and, by the way, thanks, everybody, on the call for chiming in with your questions. Lots of really good questions here. And I think we're going to answer a bunch of these in the slides to come. I know there was a lot of uh, questions about update rates, uh, et cetera. So, Dan, you want to chime in with uh, – the, the data up, updates? Yeah. So uh, the, uh, the the data in our feed, different weather elements update at different rates. We, first of all, we get the most important stuff, your radar and your storm. Radar updates about every five minutes, lightning updates every two to three minutes. So that's the critical information for safe navigation. Um, and then uh, the wind and wave uh, information updates about every 20 minutes, uh, and that's the, the, the current information. A uh, uh, 48-hour forecast, we only update that about every hour because we figure that, you know, you, you, that's not information that you need right away. The reason we stagger the data the way we do is so we can put as much data as possible into the feed. You have to realize this is being beamed from a satellite, and your antenna on your boat is only about three inches in diameter. So we have to uh, compress that data, and, and we only have room for so much. So getting you as much as we can, as quickly as we can, this is the way we've parsed it out. So, and I already talked about how the, how the sea surface temperature works. And I saw a lot of people uh, chiming in saying, you know, that's, that, that seems like a long time to wait. Uh, but there's also a lot of people chiming in saying how good this is and how well it works. And, and we're also hearing Rick tell us how, how good the sea surface temperature is um, and how well it works. And to be honest, the, the, um, while it does move, it doesn't move all that quickly. Um, and, and again, we are limited, you know, because the satellite only makes a pass every six hours. Um, and that's, that's as good as anybody's able to provide. Um, there, there's no, no other, other, other way to do that other than going to your buoys and looking at the temperature where the buoys are, seeing what the temperature is there. Um, now, as far as, as where our data comes from, I mentioned this one satellite for, for sea surface temperature. Um, we've partnered with the folks at TWC, that's the weather company or the, the weather channel, you may know them as. Um, they are compiling all of our data for us. They get the radar inf information from NOAA, and they get the, uh, the, the uh, sea surface temperature and, and all the wind and com the, uh, the computer modeling that's done for wind and wave forecast information. That's done by them for us. They've, sort of, they've got an exclusive uh, package that they, they provide us uh, for our subscribers for wind and wave information. So that's where that um, data comes from. 
And next, I'd just like to touch just a minute on, on coverage area. Um, our satellite is in a geostationary orbit. That's a hybrid of geosynchronous. What that means is um, the satellite matches the rotation of the Earth, and basically it's hovering over North America at all times. So it, it's constantly pointing at North America, and what that means is it's like a spotlight shining down. This is the border of our coverage area. So we've got good coverage all throughout the, uh, the Mid-Atlantic and up, in, up the Canadian Maritimes. Uh, coverage starts about, at about Juneau, Alaska, and runs down to uh, Puerto Vallarta, all up through the Sea of Cortez, all through the Gulf, all through the Bahamas. You lose signal just before you get to Turks and Caicos. It doesn't work in Turks and Caicos. It doesn't work in Puerto Rico. It doesn't work in the Caribbean. Unfortunately, can't get you service down there based on our satellite footprint. But everywhere else, and in the Great Lakes um, as well, and inland tributaries, uh, you're going to get nice, good coverage area. All right, so it looks like there's been quite a few questions. I know a lot of uh, update rates, refresh rates, um, sea surface temperatures. Somebody asked about uh, can we get chlorophyll shots as well? And I'll just chime in and say uh, stand by and, and can't really say much more than that. But uh, for now, you can't get chlorophyll, but just uh, bear with us. And uh, let's see, what other questions do we have out here? The one just popped up about radio in, in Panama. Um, I mentioned our coverage area. Signal does sometimes reach further out, but that's the guaranteed area that we had shown you right there um, in light blue. That's the area where we know it's going to work. Outside of that, we can't guarantee it. So, you know, it's up to you if you want to continue to pay us and be outside that area. Um, you're on your own. Dan, go back to the screen on sea surface temps, would you? Okay. In particular, the option to touch on the screen anywhere and show the uh, the temperatures. I think the example is two two slides down. So uh, perfect example here, and we really only showed it in this one spot. Uh, the temperature here is 84.6 degrees. If you have a touch screen, or even if you don't, you can scroll to anywhere on your screen and simply touch that area, and it'll show the exact temperature at that spot, a very useful feature to tell exactly what the temperature is there. Of course, you can obviously correlate the color to the, uh, to the legend on the left-hand side of your screen as well. Yeah, and different plotters work different ways. On the Garmin, it gives a pop-up right on screen. On a SimRad, it'll show up in a box down in the corner. Uh, Ray Marine will bring up a text screen that shows you the information. Uh, and then Peruno gives you a little kind of a, a window that pops up, but they all have a way to give you the temperature wherever you put the cursor. All right, let's uh, let's keep moving on. All right, so compatible receiver models. For those of you who are not current uh, Sirius XM weather uh, customers, there are four different uh, companies that we work with. That's Garmin, Raymarine, the, the Navico brands, which is Simrad, Lorenz, and B&G, and Furuno. Um, Raymarine is just coming out with a new receiver. should be launched here in the next couple weeks, um, and it's $399 uh, after our rebate. So just launched one in, in January, and that's the BBWX4. That as well is coming in at $399 after our rebate. And our rebate, by the way, for anybody who is buying any one of these receivers, we do not uh, sell these receivers ourselves. They're sold through our electronics partners. Um, but SiriusXM is offering a rebate uh, on the receivers themselves. So just go to SiriusXM.com forward slash marine rebate. And it's as simple as uh, filling out a form and we'll send you a $100 gift card. We, fill, uh, we send uh, quite a few of these out on a regular basis. Fairly straightforward process. And of course, we also always have to give a plug to the thing that made Sirius XM great in the first place. And, and, and you know, the, the marine weather is just sort of a, a, a byproduct of the, 
that they thought, oh, what can we do? We've got some extra room on the on the satellite feed. Um, but uh, we all know that fish love music too, and I know everybody has their opinion about uh, what type of music the fish that they're after likes to listen to. Um, the the nice thing is is that if you do have a marine weather receiver on your boat, all marine weather receivers on the market today are also capable of bringing in the uh, the marine radio. So you can you can pair, and it doesn't even have to be a serious ready stereo. Um, basically, the marine receiver puts out can put out serious music on on the auxiliary uh, output. So it, you can tie any stereo that has an aux in. Uh, setting, you can pipe the music into your stereo system on your boat. You don't even really need a stereo. You just need an amplifier. The um, the the splitter box that that that's on that's part of the weather receiver um, will plug in right into an amp, and then you can you can control your music right from your plotter. There's a control that'll come up. Uh, you can put it on the same screen with your weather, or you can put it on a screen by itself and adjust your volume and adjust your channels. All right and convenient from your from your MFD. Um, there are actually three packages, uh, but uh, most of you guys that are fishing offshore are either going to be looking at the uh, the coastal package or the or the offshore package. Thirty dollars a month, fifty five dollars a month. The pricing um, you can subscribe monthly, uh, semi annually, annually. It's up to you. Um, Jeff mentioned earlier you can stop and start your service uh, once a year if you're putting a boat on the hard for the winter. Uh, the main difference between these two packages and the only geographic limitation between these two packages is with sea surface temperature. Sea surface temperature stops 24 nautical miles from shore if you're subscribed to the coastal package. If you're headed out more than 24, you're going to want the $55 package. However, if you're not interested in sea surface temperature, if you just want to know storms and lightning and wind information, you'll get that with the coastal package as far out as I have as we have coverage. So out into the Bahamas and out in the Canadian Maritimes, you're going to get all the wind and storm information. There's no geographic limitation to anything but sea surface temperature. The other thing that offshore package has that the coastal package doesn't have is the forecasting. With the coastal package, we're going to give you the current conditions, and you'll get a peak. You'll see three hours ahead on devices that give you the three-hour time element to look ahead. And then if you want to see you know, two days ahead, you're going to need the offshore package to be able to get that information. And then, of course, we mentioned the audio. If the units are capable. Um, there are, are, are two of our most popular packages shown here, and you even get a discount uh, when you're subscribed to Weather when you add the, the audio service to that uh, Weather package. So uh, those are the uh, those are the marine packages. All right, and we will get to some more. I see some more questions coming in, and we'll definitely get to those um, in just a couple minutes. Uh, as far as activating your device, if you don't have a device, a weather receiver right now, first and foremost, you have to purchase uh, the hardware that we mentioned a couple minutes ago, a couple slides ago, um, and then install it. Some people choose to install it themselves. Others have an electronics uh, you know, hardware dealer or installer install it for them. Choose your sub subscription package that Dan just mentioned, and in most cases for fishing, that's either coastal or offshore. Uh, offshore for you know serious anglers that are going further offshore, as Dan mentioned. And then go to SiriusXM.com forward slash Marine Activate, or simply call. And this number is in red for a reason, and we think it's important to point out please do not go to SiriusXM.com and call the general 1-800 number. This is a very specific number that goes to our marine and aviation customer support. Uh, uh, location, and uh, these people understand uh, what a boat is uh, or what a plane is. So there is one of many 1-800 numbers that goes specifically to our marine support um, uh, division. So please make sure you're calling that number in particular. Go ahead, Dan. Okay. 
So again, we've got a, a dedicated division that uh, is familiar with uh, marine services and uh, activating boats and suspending. They realize they don't understand how people put boats away for the winter. Um, and when you call up, you know, they're not going to try and sell you radios. They're they're dedicated. They might mention if there's a special going on, but their 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 main objective is to get you take care of your marine uh, weather information. Um, they're not. Uh, trained tech support people, they don't know, uh, they haven't worked with Garmin and Furuno and Simrad and all the different brands. They have a little bit of savvy with some of these things, but not much. If you if you have technical questions, we, we strongly urge you to reach out to marine.support at SiriusXM.com. There we've got people that uh, either know the product or if you send them a question and they don't know, they'll go find you the answer. They'll reach out to Furuno on your behalf or Ray Marine or, or whoever, um, and and get you an answer. Um, and if you if you if you need uh, some assistance, uh, pushing buttons, figuring stuff out on the boat, uh, email them and set up a time. One of the techs will call you back and and walk you through any uh, screens and issues you may be having and and get it sorted out. So marine dot support is the way to get you know what I call high tier tech support. Uh, All right, and I saw there was quite a few questions um, regarding specific uh, uh, hardware weather receivers. People were having a few people were having some issues, and definitely go back to that um, uh, marine dot support at seriousxm.com if you have any specific technical questions. Uh, or if there's something on this call this evening that uh, we didn't get to and you want a specific answer, please feel free to email us. It's the best way to get a specific answer uh, answered. All right, a few questions, and I'll just go ahead and jump in here, Dan and Rick. Um, there was a bunch of questions about uh, do we have an app or do we have an online version of SiriusXM Weather? And the answer that, to that question is no. We have considered it for a while. Um, obviously, our big claim to fame is that we are satellite-based and you don't need cell signal service or to even look at a phone. You're looking at this more or less real time uh, or up-to-date, we like to say, over your chart plotter uh, in relation to your boat. So, uh, but for planning purposes, we could certainly see how an app or online could be uh, important. And I'm glad that many people have mentioned uh, that that would be of value because we definitely take that into consideration in our in our future plans. So thank you for that feedback, um, Dan. We also got some questions for from a few uh, chats about how many satellites we have. You want to address that one? Um, okay, uh, there are approximately six satellites in orbit at this time, but we're only using two. Basically, we've got one hovering over. Uh, the East Coast and one hovering over the West Coast, um, and they and I mentioned you know they're on a stationary orbit. Um, the, some units you can actually you know see their the different satellites and see which one it's using, but it's really not important. Um, all of your uh, chart plotters will have a a signal strength indicator, and I do urge you to and you know, if you're ever questioning. Um, whether your service is, is having issues or not, that's the first thing you should look at is look at your signal strength and see if you've got um, at least two or three bars. Um, one bar is not enough. Um, it kinda, it's kind of like downloading a photograph from the in Internet. If you only have one bar, it slows it down and it doesn't work really well. Um, so you need two bars or better. All right, I'll, I'll field the next question and then the following one after that, Dan, I'll, I'll pass it on to you. Um, let's go back up to the screenshot of the fish species in particular. I, I think you yeah. included, what, four different fish here? <clears throat> and apologize, the intention was not to cause confusion here. The goal with this slide in particular was to show you the ideal temperature ranges that these fish are most active in. Uh, it was not to specifically point out fish species over this. Um, that that is an option to pick out specific fish species over Sirius XM weather. However, having said that, um, I will say we'll put that one in the same category as chlorophyll. So please uh, stand by to be continued. And Dan, the question um, I think would be a good one for you to add, uh, answer would be: Can you set uh, warnings for lightning or other warnings. Can you tell us about that a little bit? 
Right. Um, absolutely. That's a feature of the chart plotter, not of the actual weather feed. But all of them do have the ability to, to turn on alerts and turn on storm warnings and lightning warnings. And different brands do it different ways. Um, uh, with some of them, you can actually set a physical mile range. So you can say if lightning strikes within 10 miles, it'll give you a pop-up on screen and beep at you and say, hey, you might want to look if there's something going on here. We did get some um, questions about service, uh, and I know, Dan, you, you um, in one of the slides previously, we talked about the bars, the Sirius XM weather receiver bars that you can see on your chart plotter. It is important that you have at least a couple bars uh, of your Sirius XM weather, and if you do not have clear location from your antenna to the satellites, if something is interfering with that, we have seen people, for whatever reason, mount Sirius XM weather receivers uh, below decks uh, or under fiberglass or with some obstruction, uh, hard top or, or something else. Uh, and, and while it may work, it's not the most effective place to put your uh, antenna. Uh, so you want a clear view of the satellites to receive the best signal as possible. Right. Under, under canvas is okay. Under a bimini top is okay. That's not going to create much trouble. But any solid mass like fiberglass or metal, that's going to start to reduce the uh, signal. The signal can see through clear plastic, so you can, if you do a small boat setting it up on the windshield, the the the, the windshield is not going to block the signal either. Um, it's just more more solid mass than that is what what gives gives uh, the the signal trouble. Um, there was a question getting back to um, sea surface temperature. I, I mentioned it works 20 miles, 24 miles from shore. That would be 24 miles from contiguous U.S. Uh, so, no, it doesn't, if your coastal package is not going to give you sea surface temperatures in the Bahamas. Here's another one, too, and I know I mentioned this earlier. We are recording this WebEx. We will send it out to everybody uh, who signed up for this webinar. What we will also send is uh, Dan and I just made an entire series starting with Garmin, because we know that there's a lot of Garmin users uh, in particular that are anglers. Um, but uh, starting with Garmin, we, we are making a very specific YouTube a series of short videos that you can simply search on YouTube and find the answers to your questions, such as how do I set up warnings? Uh, how do I access and control sea surface temperatures? Remember, we showed you how to set up those ranges. Um, and so we're going to go through feature by feature specifically, and uh, we'll send you um, a link to our YouTube site when those are posted live so that you guys can all have access to them. And if you're not a Garmin uh, user, we will have those updated in the not too distant future. But uh, again, with anybody who has technical questions, please email us, marine.support at SiriusXM.com. All right, what other questions do we have? Rick, did you have any um, input or uh, answers to questions or anything else you wanted to add? No, I mean, I think Seeing's believing, and uh, once you start using the product, uh, you know, it's kind of like once you had serious radio, it's kind of hard to go back, you know. So I, all I can say is, guys, you need to try it from time to time. We have some trial periods that are real inexpensive, and uh, it really works well. Yeah, thanks, Rick. That's, a, that's actually a really good point, too, because it's not the most uh, intuitive sometimes. And we've had people on our webinars. We've been running a series of webinars for the last over a month. We've had people that have been SiriusXM Weather subscribers for a day now that have chimed in in the chat and said, wow, I learned a lot of new features tonight that I had no idea even existed. So, um, again, we hope that this webinar was useful in educating you, and uh, hopefully – the YouTube videos that we send out to everybody on this call will educate you even more. Any other questions that you see, uh, Dan or Lauren? Hey, Jeff, the, uh, the tips that we've done that are airing on the Florida Insider Fish Report, are those on Sirius XM site? They absolutely are. Yep. Uh, Rick has actually been producing a series of videos for us that are real short, easy to, to uh, consume and digest uh, overviews of our various features. So those are on our SiriusXM Marine YouTube page as well. 
uh, and in fact, uh, we can we can send those to you guys or a link to those. Uh, after the web, webinar is over. So in the next week, expect to uh, get a WebEx recording, those Garmin videos, uh, and some other useful details uh, for you guys all to consume. And again, if you have any questions, SiriusXM, um, it can go to uh, marine.support at SiriusXM.com. We really appreciate everybody joining us this evening. And uh, stand by, as mentioned, for future, near future, I'll say, updates coming from us specifically about fishing. So thanks again, everybody, for joining us. Have a great evening and stay in touch.